Here is part two of our chapter five video lecture series where we're going to go through some examples of different inventory costing methods, these four different methods here. But before we do so, let's review the calculation of the relationship of inventory and cost of goods sold. So if you remember the calculation we learned back in chapter four, to get the cost of goods sold amount on the company's income statement was to take the beginning inventory, that's the ending inventory from the previous month or year, and we add in the purchases of merchandise we plan to resell to our customers, reduced or here netted by any discounts and allowances and returns we gave back to our suppliers. Adding the two amounts here for the the month of the year will give us the merchandise available for sale at our company's cost. Then we subtracted what we didn't sell, the ending inventory, to get the cost of goods sold. In other words, these two amounts have to equal this middle number here. Likewise, these two beginning amounts have to equal that same merchandise available for sale. And if one number down here is relatively large, a big ending inventory, that means at the same time, the cost of goods sold is relatively low. Again, these, again, these two amounts have to equal the same amount here. Or if the ending inventory, based upon the costing method you choose, is relatively low, that means the cost of goods sold number is going to be relatively larger. Again, adding up these two, you got to get that same merchandise available for sale. So here's a simplified example showing you the three of the four different methods called first in, first out, last in, first out, and the weighted average. In this simplified illustration, we're just buying and reselling, let's say, bricks. This is really the same bricks here, even though they're different colored. The first brick we bought was on May 1st, costing $45. And then the second brick we bought was on May 3rd at $65. And the third one on May 6th at $60. Notice as time goes on, May 1st, 3rd, and 6th, the price increases or the cost increases. Of course, we know that's inflation something very applicable to us here in the year 2023. And we're going to assume just one brick was sold at a price of $100 to our customers, be it using any of these three methods here. So you can see the net sales price um, amount for revenue is $100 in all three situations. But now, depending upon what costing method you're going to use, will determine what's the cost of goods sold down here. Keeping in mind, this is a costing method and not the physical flow of the merchandise coming in and going out of your store. In all cases, you probably want to sell this old brick here at the bottom. Yeah, this first brick that came in on May 1st. But in our accounting method, we can pick any one of these costs, at least be it in a systematic method picking any one of these three costs here, any one of these three costs, any one of these three costs, depending upon which method you're using. Now, in the case of the first in, first out method or FIFO method, what came in first, what you bought first, is this first purchase on May 1st. So that's what we're going to assume is first out of your store, first thing sold during this period of time. So that's why we're going to deduct this $45, resulting in a profit of $55. Now what's unsold is these two newer bricks, 70 plus 65, or on your balance sheet assets, you have unsold inventory you still have of $135. Now if you use almost the opposite method called last in, first out, and that means you're going to sell one brick again at $100, but this time you're going to use the last price, the last thing that came in of $70 here being subtracted out, a higher cost than this $45, resulting in a smaller profit of 30 
as compared to the FIFO $55. So now, if you sold this $70 brick, what's left over is the $65 and $45, or a total of inventory, unsold merchandise of $110. That is less than the inventory of the later prices here for the FIFO method. And the weighted average method basically will have amounts falling in between the FIFO and LIFO, between the FIFO and LIFO. And the calculation is to get the average cost of one single brick. So you add up all three prices here to get 180. And you divide it by the count of bricks, in that case three, to average out to $60 per brick. So you still have a sales price of 100 but this time the average cost of goods sold is only $60. And then the two bricks unsold, 60 times 2 equals 120 sitting on your balance sheet inventory asset. Again, this is a simplified example. This is just selling a, a brick, one brick, yeah, out of three bricks. And it's interchangeable here. Yeah? You could sell any one of these physically. But we're using different costing methods to assign the brick that was sold and the bricks that were unsold. Bricks that were sold, cost of goods sold. Bricks that are unsold, the ending inventory here showing up as an asset on the balance sheet. So let's get a bit, a little bit more detailed here. So there's two different broad categories of inventory systems. We're studying right now the method called perpetual, perpetual inventory system. There's another method called periodic that's covered in an appendix uh, at the end of the chapter, which you're not responsible for. But just be aware, there's two broad categories of inventory systems, perpetual that we're studying, and periodic, the other method. And in either case, again, we're trying to price out, cost out the inventory that's unsold sitting as an asset on your balance sheet and the inventory that's no longer there because you sold it and assigning it a cost, a cost of goods sold that we're going to deduct as probably the largest expense on your income statement. Here it mentions that the physical flow of merchandise coming into your store and going out to your customers, the cost assigned to that inventory doesn't necessarily have to follow the physical flow if we're using um, one of those three methods we just saw. The fourth method will actually follow the physical flow called specific identification method. That's the fourth method. So here's a summary of all the transactions we're going to go through for the month of August for our uh, company that sells um, mountain bikes. And this is just one model for our company, Trekking. Now, Trekking could sell multiple different types of bikes multiple different types of products, but we're only looking at this one specific uh, model of bike, mountain bike, and um, applying the different costing systems. So at the beginning of the month, we have unsold inventory from last month. 10 bikes, each had cost us $91 for a total cost of that in beginning inventory of $910. And then on August 3rd, we bought 15 bikes at a price of $106 each, and then had a sale of 20 bikes on the 14th. On the 17th and 28th, we bought some more bikes to replenish our inventory. And the last transaction for this mountain bike is on the August 30th when we sell 23 bikes. So bikes are coming in, bikes are going out, coming in and going out throughout the month. And we want to perpetually keep track of the cost of what's going out and the cost of what's left over, the inventory. So let's apply, um, let's see, something called the specific identification method. So here we're going to trace the exact cost to each bike coming in and going out. Not the three methods I, we showed you uh, just a, a few minutes ago, yeah, that FIFO, LIFO, and average method. Here we're going to trace the actual cost to each item. So we start off with the 10 bikes um, at, as beginning inventory. And here it says you sold them all. 
So that $900, $910 cost, all of it is going to go into the cost of goods sold total. And then the 15 bikes we bought on August 3rd. Here it says all of them were sold. So the cost of that 15 $1,590 is going to go into the cost of goods sold total. But then the 20 bikes we bought on the 17th, we sold 15 of them, each costing $115. So we multiply, or we call it extend out to this total to be included in the cost of goods sold, or really here down at the bottom. And then the last purchase, these 10 bikes we bought, seven of them are still here. But that means three of them at this price, 119 each, were sold. So you got to track now under this specific identification method what was sold, exactly their price, and what's still here. Again, exactly their price. So the cost of goods available for sale, this amount here, we're splitting it between the cost of the 43 bikes that was sold and the 12 bikes that are still here. Okay, Now, this is the logical thing most people think what is happening, right? We deduct the cost only when you sell it. You don't deduct the cost if you still didn't sell it. But this takes a lot of work, a lot of identification of items coming in and going out of your store. The other methods are simpler to utilize Again, the five for life on average method. So let's take a look at that those methods. In this case, specifically the first in, first out, or the acronym is pronounced FIFO. And that means whatever came in first, that's the beginning inventory and first purchase. That's with the older, in this case, cheaper cost because of inflation. That's what's sold first. That's first to leave your store, first out. So that means when you try to figure out your ending inventory, what's still here is the last purchase, the second to the last purchase at the higher price in that inventory, ending inventory figure. So here in this schedule, we'll take a look at the application of FIFO. So we start off with the 10 units in the beginning inventory. Then we buy 15 more units at a higher price. So now we have what we call two layers of inventory the older layer, the beginning inventory, and then the first purchase for the month. Then the next transaction for this mountain bike is to sell 20 units. So under the FIFO rules, the oldest one gets sold first. There's 10 at 91. And that means we need to sell another 10 coming out of this 15, the first purchase, 10 at $106. Yeah, $106. So this a sale of 20 bikes has this total cost to us. Again, we're selling it for more than this, yeah? But this is our cost we're going to subtract out on the income statement. So what's left over in our inventory is five bikes from the first purchase. Again, we extend it out to get the inventory costs here. Then the next two transactions is we buy some more. We buy some more. Notice the per unit cost is increasing, yeah? 115, 119. So again, we're seeing inflation. Now, if there's no inflation at all, every time we buy, we pay the same cost. Then no matter which method you're using, FIFO, LIFO, uh, average, specific identification, the results would be the same amount for cost of goods sold and ending inventory. But because of inflation, or sometimes the opposite, if there were deflation, I wish, then the cost of goods sold and in inventory would be differing amounts like we see here. So now we're selling here, uh, we're, we're adding a new layer here, yeah? We're adding a new layer over here. The inventory is getting bigger. So now when we sell 23 bikes, again, the FIFO rules is whatever came in first, that means it's five over here is... Um, sold first and then the next 18 is coming from this 20 over here and that's going to leave two left over in the ending inventory and all of this 10 here is unsold so it goes into the last ending inventory amount so for the two sales here we add up the cost and this is our cost of goods sold for the month for this one mountain bike and the unsold mountain bikes again we have two layers here 
will carry over as inventory, right now ending, and will be the beginning inventory for next month. And next month, the first thing we do is going to sell these two older ones over here. Okay, this is the FIFO method. Let's take a look at the LIFO method. Whatever came in last, we have on hand. We're going to assume to be sold right now, first to go out the store. Here, the recent cost, the higher cost for inflation, that's what's going to be deducted as cost of goods sold on the income statement. And what's left over by the end of the month is the older, cheaper costs with a lower value here in the ending inventory on the balance sheet. So again, the same transactions, but now applying the, the LIFO rules. We start off with the 10 bikes in the beginning inventory. We buy 15 more at the same cost like we saw before, now having an inventory of 25 bikes. But then when we sell, there's 20 bikes here on August 14th. The first place we look is the last purchase. So all of this 15 is going to be included in this 20 that's being sold. So that means not only five of this 10 in the beginning inventory is going to be part of this sale here. Okay, so we extend out, we add up the two layers, and here's your cost of goods sold for this first sale. Here's the leftover in inventory. Then we buy some more, adding a layer. Yeah, then we buy some more, adding another layer of inventory. Then we sell 23 bikes here on August 3rd. The LIFO rules, it says... The item that came in last, that's this 10 bikes over here. All of them are sold in the 23. Now we need 13 more bikes coming out of this 20. Here's the 13. Here's the leftover seven of that purchase. Added to the, it looks like it's the beginning inventory way up here. Out of this 10, we're saying under the costing of LIFO, it's still here at the end of the month. Now physically, those old bikes probably left the store. We want to get rid of the old ones first, right? But for accounting costing purposes, if you're using this LIFO method, you could have probably inventory here years old that you bought many years ago, as long as you're consistent in applying the method you're using. Let's talk about that third method now called the Average, or here, weighted. Weighted means the more units you have, the more weight you're going to give to that cost. So the formula is to take the cost of goods available for sale after adding any recent purchase and dividing it by the units you have available for sale. So every time you have a purchase, you got to recalculate the average cost. That's when you buy more merchandise. Now, when you sell merchandise, the average cost is going to continue to be the same. You carry it over to the next, to the, in your inventory to the next purchase or the next sale. Again, you only recalculate, you only use this formula when you buy more inventory. So here is the beginning inventory again with an average cost of $91 each for 10 units. Now, when we buy 15 more, we got to recalculate the average cost. So we add up the 9, 10 uh, beginning inventory plus this 2,500 um, purchase. No, let me take that back. Uh, 900 beginning inventory plus this purchase of 1,590 or total cost of the 25 bikes, cost of goods available for sale, $2,000. $500, and you divide it by the 25 bikes. Yeah, the 25 bikes here. 10 plus 15, yeah? To get an average, weighted average cost of one bike of $100. So now, the next transaction, we sell 20 bikes. Average cost, $100. And what's left over? Five bikes at an average cost of $100. Again, when you sell, the average stays the same. Okay, you don't recalculate the average. Okay, $100 per bike. It's only when you buy you have to recalculate the average, which we got to do when we have here on August 17 a purchase of 20 bikes, total of 2300 We add that to 
the five bikes that's carried over from the previous transaction. Here's the cost of goods available for sale, 2,800. We have 25 bikes available for sale, now with an average cost of $112. That's 2,800 divided by 25. Here you can see the calculation. Again, if we gotta recalculate the average when you buy merchandise, yeah? So again, we buy again. On the 28th, another 10 bikes. We add that cost to the previous cost of goods available for sale and divide that by now the total bikes available for sale to get a new average of 114. And then the last transaction is to sell. And you don't recalculate the average. Each one of the 23 bikes we sell here on August 23rd has that same average cost we recalculated from the last purchase. 114. And the 12 bikes left over have an average cost of 114. Again, you do the calculation of the average cost only when you buy. Yeah? Buy. When you buy. When you buy. Not when you sell. Yeah? Not when you sell. So this is a summary of that weighted average method. So let's compare the three or four methods on our financial statements. Again, using the first in, first out method, during a period of rising prices, every time we buy bicycles, we're uh, paying a higher price per bike. Although, in our examples here, when we sell to our customers, we're assuming we're keeping it at the same price, which in real life probably is not true. We probably should be increasing our price to our customers, but just to make it more comparable, we're keeping our sales price, not our cost, but the sales price the same per bike. So the uh, more expensive cost, the later cost, is sitting in the ending inventory. So the inventory, if you look at it on your company's financial statements, probably represents close to the replacement costs the true replacement costs of, of um, the bicycles yeah, that you still own. But if you look at the income statement for the first and first out, what you were deducting is a relatively older, less expensive cost, possibly understating the cost of goods sold, possibly overstating the profit and the net income you made, again, using the FIFO method during a period of inflation. Now, just the opposite, the last and first out, the recent higher cost is being deducted as a cost of goods sold on your income statement, reducing the profit, reducing your company's net income, probably giving you a better indication of your profitability when you are deducting that latest highest cost. But if you look at the company's balance sheet under the LIFO method, what you'll see there is relatively cheap costs when you bought paid for items a long time ago. Okay, so that probably is being understated using the LIFO method during a period of inflation. So a compromise is to use the weighted average method. Here it says it smooths out the costs. So you're gonna have an inventory figure falling in between the FIFO and LIFO method. You're gonna have a cost of goods sold uh, amount falling in between the LIFO and FIFO method. That's the weighted average method. So here's the dollar comparison. In all cases, we assume that the sales price is the same. Again, maybe not realistic yet yeah, because we should be increasing our prices to our customers if there's inflation for the cost we have to pay. So not counting this specific identification method, but just looking at the uh, FIFO, LIFO, and weighted methods, you can see during a period of inflation, the one that gives you the largest uh, cost of goods sold is LIFO. Here, the higher price is being deducted here. And the lower, older prices are being deducted for LIFO. And the weighted average method falls in between the two here. Yeah? So you kind of know you're on the right track when that weighted amount falls between the FIFO and LIFO method. But because the cost of goods sold is different, the gross profit is different. You notice here, the pro most profitable is the FIFO method. The least profitable is the LIFO method. Average method, again, falls in between the two. 
So if you want to impress people how profitable your business is, which method would you use? Or if you want to save on paying income taxes to the government, which method would you use? Well, the government says that, you know, if you want to use the LIFO method for taxes, so you have a smaller profit, smaller net income, pay less taxes, they're telling you, you also got to use this LIFO method when you prepare your company's financial statements and show this less, smaller profit. Okay, so that's really a tax rule. And what we're learning here in our class is not really taxes. We're learning financial accounting rules. But just to tell you that the um, taxes may be involved yeah, in some of the rules we're learning here. Okay, that's for, um, for LIFO. Now, looking at the company's balance sheet, including the inventory asset you own, the one that shows the largest inventory is the one that has the higher latest prices, Life FIFO. And then LIFO, again, you could have really old inventory here, many years old, when you bought it at a cheaper price. Okay, so again, average falling in between the two. So there are some advantages either way, depending upon the method you choose. Here it mentions again that if you use the LIFO method for your taxes here, IRS, then you got to use that same LIFO method when you prepare your company's income statement and balance sheet. Okay, go continue to the next video. That will be probably our third and last video for this Chapter 5 where we deal with um, something called lower of cost or market and do some um, analysis if there's errors in valuing your inventory.